Hello guys, welcome to the part 2 of our employee benefits discussion. This time we will be answering problems on post-employment benefits and mainly dalawa ang i-illustrate natin dito that is your defined contribution plan and defined benefit plan. So let's start with a simple problem on defined contribution plan. Okay? So defined contribution plan, ano yung mga tanong? Uh, just to recap, ano? Yung defined contribution plan natin, you agree a certain amount of payment. Pero yung defined benefit plan naman, you agree a certain amount of benefits to the employee. You agree a certain amount of contribution, you agree a certain amount of benefit. So, sa dalawang to, ang mas mahirap po is defined benefit. Defined contribution is rather straightforward, like this. Tinatanong tayo, how much is the employee benefit expense? Our expense will be limited to how much we agreed to paid. So, kung ano ang agreement na babayaran natin, yun na yung magiging expense. And then, how much is the accrued benefit payable? How much did you agree to pay versus how much did you actually pay? Kung may difference dyan, magkakaroon tayo ng payable. Pero kung equal lang ang ibinayad natin, wala tayong problema. So, number two, tinatanong sa atin, how much is the accrued benefit payable if we contributed 1 million? Pero sa number 3, independently from number 2, assuming during the year, Friday paid 2 million to the trustee instead. How much is the prepaid benefit expense? Okay, so we have three requirements. Let me just do a highlight here. Unang-una, employee benefit expense, tinatanong. Pangalawa, how much is the accrued benefit payable if we contributed 1 million? And then third, if we paid 2 million, how much is the prepaid benefit expense? So let's go about with defined contribution plan. Friday Company provides benefits to employees through defined contribution plan. The plan provides that Friday shall contribute annually 9% of gross payroll. So the, the agreement is simple. Your salary, your gross salary, 9% of that, I will contribute to a fund for your pension. In addition, the entity also is required to contribute 6% annual sales exceeding 15 million. So, ito pa, meron pang variable na agreement. Ano? Kapag ang sales natin maglagpas ng 15 million because of your hard work, you will also be incentivized. 6% of the excess will be included in your post-employment benefit fund. So, during 2019, the gross payroll was 6 million 500 and the total sales amounted to 32,000. Okay, so a hefty increment or excess there. Simple lang ang problem dito. Pag tinanong employee benefit expense, i-compute natin how much we agreed to pay. So, our computation would go like this. 9% of gross payroll, the gross payroll is 6,500,000. Multiply natin by 9%. 585 is the base amount that we agreed. However, meron tayong incentive. In excess of 15 million na sales, meron daw ibibigay 6%. So, yung sales natin actually totaled 32 million. The excess of 15 million is equal to 17 million. And then sinabi na ang 17 million na yan, 6% daw, multiply natin by 6%, This amount will be contributed to the pension fund as well, to the employee benefit fund. So, in memory plus ko lang to, memory recall, the answer is 1,605,000. So, your requirement 1 will have a solution that looks like this. So, as computed earlier, 6,500 times 9% is 585. 32,000 minus 15 million, the excess of which, excess sales, 17 million, multiply natin by 6%, that would be the total amount to be paid or to be contributed to the fund for the employees. That's a total of 1,605,000 as per computation earlier. And your entry to record the accrual of the employee benefit is a debit to employee benefit expense, 1,605, and a credit to accrued benefits payable, 1,605. This is provided na hindi pa tayo nababayad ha. Meron pa tayong accrued benefit payable na 1605. However, moving on, requirement number two, 
Assuming daw na nag-contribute tayo ng 1 million sa fund, how much is the accrued benefit payable? Okay, here. Your obligation now is 1,605, di ba? Pero ang binayaran mo lang 1 million. Ang contribution mo lang is 1 million. Ano yun? So parang ganito yun. Ito yung payable mo actually. Ito yung total na obligation mo. Pag nagbayad ka ng 1 million, nasettle mo ang obligation mo, but only for 1 million. Which means na mayroon ka pang 605 na that is the amount of payable na kailangan mo pa isettle. Nag-agree ka for 1605, binayad mo 1 million lang, may payable ka pa. Okay? So that should be your answer for number 2. Which, if we are going to present in a solution, will look like this. So first, to record the payment, your entry would look like this. Accrued benefit payable, 1 million, debit. Credit ka ng cash, 1 million. So, walang beginning balance ang accrued benefits payable natin. Pero during the year, we accrued 1,605. Binayad natin to, so deduct yan. In short, at the end of the year, meron pa tayong payable. Pagka next year, ito yung magiging beginning balance ng payable natin. However, in the financial statement, this should be presented as a liability because the result of the benefit plan in 2019 is an underfunding. Kulang ang pondo na inilaan mo for the employees for them to receive sufficiently their pensions. So may utang ka pa. The 605 will be presented as a liability. Punta naman tayo sa requirement number 3. How about if we paid 2 million? So, ano ulit yun? If I were to present the payable, we only had a payable of 1,605 based on computation. However, kung ibinayad natin is 2 million, magkakaroon tayo ng sobrang payment, an overpayment of 395,000. That overpayment is what we call prepaid benefit expense nagsobra ang ibinayad sa obligation which means that we are going to present an asset a prepayment your solution for number 3 should look like this so you have here the entry to record the payment a credit to cash 2 million ang ibinayad di ba pero 1605 lang ang recorded liability so meron kang sobra 395 that should be presented as an asset the result of the benefit plan in 2019 is an overfunding which means that 605 balance of the accrued benefit is an asset. Yun po. So defined contribution, really your, your only problem here is computing how much is the benefit expense based on agreement. Pag na-compute mo na si benefit expense, i-compare mo magkano ang ibinayad natin. If you're going to look for the ending payable or ending prepayment, beginning plus accrual of the benefit expense minus payment. Yun lang ang solution natin, or it should be this one, here. Simple as that.